Hey everybody, just a quick video. I wanted to look at one of my favorite logic effects, which is the remix effects. However, I find it's actually a little misleading in its design. It's really, the way they have it built is so that you'll use a device to touch it. And I think that the impreciseness of using a tactile interface in something like this, where you may be doing a filter or a repeater, or the gate effect here. The gate is the one I actually want to look at mostly, but I wanted to be able to make this so that I could have very precise parts of this being affected in a mix. And so I set out to do this. It was a little trickier than I first thought, partly because if I use something like the modulator MIDI effect and I go to learn plugin parameter and I touch this, Part of the thing that happens is, is that it just does an on or an off for it. And so we don't actually get very easily the ability to come in and have the actual parameters moved. So what do we do when we can't do something with the modulator? We use the environment. Now the environment is pretty well set up for this, although there's a couple tricks to it. So what I did was I put a monitor, so I added a monitor right there, and I pulled out this track that has that remix effect on it. And so anytime now that I moved it, I can see a couple things. One is, is that we are using the fader uh, channel four uh, with 2018 and 2019. Now 2019, uh, an actual a value of one turns it on and then a value of zero turns it back off. So that's what the modulator was seeing. And then the 2018, uh, that data was actually moving it up and down. And so that was part of it. Now, it turns out I actually had a little bit extra in here. Um, and I think we're, I'm gonna show you one thing I can do to to do this. I was having a hard time at first getting it to turn on and off. So I had a transformer here turning it on. Um, but we're going to leave that off for just a moment. So what I did was I went in, let me pull this back off the screen and I just created another just blank instrument track. And on this instrument track, I put a step sequencer and I just sent out uh, well, I created one of these instead of notes. I did automation and I just did general number one, which is uh, CC 16. And then I can program that on 16. That was the first thing. Uh, from there, I pulled the MIDI off of this in the environment. Uh, you can see it's coming down into this monitor, 16. And... Um, if, if we move values, you'll see those go up and down. I took a transformer off of that and the status, I fixed it to the fader value. Uh, this is the, the type of MIDI that the actual um, effects is trying to look for when, if you're gonna control it. I fixed it to value four, which I figured out just by looking at it off the monitor. So the first monitor was to sleuth the data I needed. So I fixed it to four. I fixed the data byte one to 2018. Uh, and then data byte two, I just left as through. That means that whatever was coming off of the original step sequencer, that information would hold. Um, so now let's just simply uh, solo this one out for a second. I'm going to push play and you're going to see this one piece of information. And then for a few steps in the middle, it, it changes. It goes up to 127, 126 into the transformer, which is the converted to F4 2018 uh, for that amount. And then the monitor coming off of this channel is still working. So then I look at the actual remix effects and every time we hit these steps right here in the middle 
this is going to snap up to the top value. Right, like that. Now, if I want to also set this uh, to turn it off for all the other steps, we could actually add another one here, maybe with 17, CC17, and have that converted into uh, F4 2019 zero, um, and then it would turn it off for all the other times. So now, anytime I want to have this particular thing go to a certain value, I can just drag on that step, and it's going to do it for that amount of time. I can do it for a whole bar here. like that. And so the actual effect here is tied to a vocal patch. And I'll play this for you now so you can hear the whole thing. And you'll see it working as it goes along. Let's actually move this down so you can see the whole thing. reality the part that I really wanted this for was just this section right here with that vocal when it's doing those the more of the movement so I can just delete all the rest and just leave this on for the one <laughs> The other thing that is actually in play right this moment that I need to change, but I was doing this originally, I have this modulator on, and it's set to just turn it on all the time. Let's uh, deactivate that, and I'll show you what happens here. <laughs> So what we're left with, sometimes there's a little bit of quirk with this. It is still registering us on, even though it's not receiving any data. And so if we wanted to, we'd have to implement some of the other, the other plans there. Or, you know, one really easy way to do this um, is to come through and combine some automation types here. And we could come down with remix effects. Uh, or let's see, we have the gate, gator on and off, just like this. And then this would beg the question, why not just do it all with this type of automation? And the answer is you can. So you can do this with various types. The reason why I like doing it this way is because I love having the step sequencer here and being able to just put it on for a note uh, or put it on for some other place. If you wanted to do this in here, you certainly could do it with any of the other automation paths, but um, there's something about connecting the step sequencer into this equation. So now... So different ways of doing it, different reasons for doing it. Um, I really love being able to have the step sequencer attached into uh, the mix effects, the remix effects. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, more videos coming soon.